Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you. More than anything. Your name is like honey. All my lips, your spirit's like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you, your name. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit's like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. Lift your voice as high and sing. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit's like water to my soul. Your about this song that we're getting ready to sing and it's about the redeemed about us singing about who we are in Jesus amen we're gonna sing it this morning I, I just I know the presence of the Lord has been so powerful already in this place as we've practiced and as we've we've just sunk into the words that we're singing it's so powerful we want to welcome every one of you that are watching online this morning welcome 
Just enjoy the presence of Jesus this morning. Just remind yourself of who you are in Him. That nothing can come against you. Nothing can harm you because Jesus is around. Jesus is in you. Jesus loves you so much. He's here to strengthen you today. He's here to encourage us, to give us a word that we need this morning in a mighty way. And let's just stand together. Let's open in prayer. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. Father, we are in that mode already to worship your presence, to worship your Holy Spirit. Lord, we give you praise this morning for your goodness and all that you have for us today. Lord God, I thank you that every word that is spoken, it will come to life in our, in our spirits. And we will know, Lord, this word is for us. I thank you that you encourage us, that you lift us up. And we worship you, Lord Jesus, like there is no other God before us. Father, we love you so much. Bless this time. Lord, we pray that this worship will honor you. That all the things from this past week, Father, we will just give it all and surrender to your presence in a powerful and mighty way. Father, we love you. We love you this morning, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for miracles, miracles in this place today. For the ones who are watching online, Lord God, they need a miracle. We need miracles in our lives. There's things we're praying for and believing for, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you are our only answer and our only true, true God. There is no other God besides you. And I just praise you this morning. Let us worship you. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just praise Him this morning. Jesus. There's nobody like Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are holy, holy, holy. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just put your hands together and give Him praise this morning. You are worthy, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sing it. It's the song of the redeemed rising from the African plain. It's the song of the forgiven drowning out the Amazon rain. The song of Asian believers filled with God's holy fire. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation, a love song born of a grateful choir. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. All God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. So let it rise above the four winds, caught up in the heavenly sound. Hallelujah, yes, Jesus. Let praises echo from the towers of the cathedrals to the faithful gathered underground. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none rings truer than this. Lift your voice and declare, it's all God's children singing glory, glory. All God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, 
All God's children saying glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. Lift your voice and declare the song. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. Sing. All the powers of darkness tremble at what they just heard. Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. Hallelujah. Declare it. All the powers of darkness tremble at what they just heard. Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. Declare that again. It's all the powers of darkness tremble at what they just heard. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. No, 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 no. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Hallelujah. children singing glory glory hallelujah he reigns he reigns all God's children singing glory glory hallelujah he reigns he reigns all God's children singing glory glory hallelujah he reigns oh precious Lord powers of darkness tremble at what they just heard yes all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word and all the powers of darkness tremble at what they just heard declare it Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. No, no way. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Hallelujah, He reigns. He reigns. All God's children singing glory, glory. Hallelujah, He reigns. He reigns. Children sing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, taught God's children sing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, declare he reigns, you reign, taught God's children sing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. All God's children sing it glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. Lift your hands and sing. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. All God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. Lift your voice and say, it's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. All we 
we got to do that again. It's all God's children singing. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. He reigns. Oh, give my Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, we magnify your name. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, how we worship you, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just take a minute and just lift him up oh, in this house this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Oh, how we praise you. Lord. You love us so.
justice kissed again to your world in love. One more time, just your voices. Grace and love like mighty rivers poured in sand sent from above heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed again to world in Can we just take a second in his presence this morning? Almighty God. I'll go ahead, just take a moment in his presence. Almighty Forget God. everything else. Hallelujah, Jesus. Almighty God. Almighty God. You are worthy, Jesus. Jesus, this is your time. Your time is my worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Before we start singing anything else, can we just take a moment in His presence? Forget everything that's gone on this week, today. Forget what's happening in the week to come. Just look at Him now for a moment and tell Him how much you love Him. Every sunrise, the colors of the morning are inside your eyes. The world awakens in the light of the day. I look up to the sky and say, You're beautiful.
face we see you are beautiful Say it to I see your face you're beautiful you're beautiful you're beautiful I see your face you're beautiful you're beautiful you're beautiful I see your face you're beautiful you're beautiful, you're beautiful, I see your face, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful.
we were singing that song, it just seemed like the more we sang, Jesus, you're beautiful. I could just, I could just see the glory, the light. It just like it got brighter and brighter and brighter. And I was thinking of the river of life flowing and glistening with all the emeralds and all the, the jewels and that life flowing through us and that glory just hitting it off, off the glory of Jesus, just bouncing back and forth between us and heaven. Oh, how powerful as we sang about Jesus and God and the beauty. You are so beautiful. Father, I thank you this morning. That life in us is flowing in us. Life to the full till it overflows is flowing in us. Directly between us and heaven that we can walk and move and live and have your being within us. Oh, the power of that anointing. Oh, I praise you for it this morning. I praise you, Lord God. You hung on that tree. You hung on that tree for us. That we could see your glory, see your beauty in such a marvelous light. I give you praise for that this morning. That no matter what anyone is going through, no matter what challenge we face, whether you're here or watching online, God's glory is brighter. The victory is brighter. It's shining. It's overtaken the darkness. There is no darkness in God's love. There is no darkness. There, are, there is nothing that can keep the light of the glory of God shining in our lives. And I give you praise. Father, your word says that as we worship you, we expect your best in our lives. So I expect the glory of God in each life this morning. I expect the Word of God to be so profound, to be strengthened in us today, that we will not back down on any challenge, that we will know that in us is the victory. Oh, I praise you, Lord God. We sing, you are so beautiful to me. You are so wonderful. And we give you the praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just drink it in this morning as we sing it again. Just drink it in. Just know the connection that you have with heaven, with our heavenly Father. That is one-on-one -on -one with you, with each of us. He loves each of us. He sees each of us. And he loves us so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing it again. Look at him and say, You are so beautiful to me, Jesus. You are so beautiful to me. favor this morning just every child of God just lift a hand and love him Jesus, go ahead just do it for a moment Jesus, Jesus. nobody like you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah 
Just sing this little chorus. Sing, sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for in His wonderful things and the things. forward this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we have access to the fullness of your glory, to the fullness of your grace. We thank you for your beautiful presence we feel in this house this morning. We thank you, Lord, that when we call, you are there. Even your word declares you are as close as the mention of your name. On our lips, in our hearts, and we thank you. Father, we just declare a blessing on the seed. We declare a blessing on the sower. And we declare a blessing on the harvest. We thank you, Lord, for your provision. Lord, that you not only provide, but you multiply. Multiply every gift, every seed to the furtherance and the growth of your kingdom as we are careful to give you praise. In Jesus' name, sing. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and praise. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Hallelujah. What a beautiful presence of God is here this morning. Amen. I guess that's kind of a redundant thing that we say. Because his presence is always beautiful. Amen. But sometimes it's just a special presence and we feel that here this morning. Amen. Let's just go through some announcements really quick. Don't forget uh, weekly services obviously at 10 a.m. and 945 both in person and uh, online and we appreciate we say it every week but that's because we mean it every week we so appreciate everyone that is here in person and we appreciate all of those that join us every week online and partake with us and worship with us and they do we've received we, re, we receive <laughs> regularly reports of ones that are watching and, and join us online and they they worship with us they shout with us they pray with us they take communion with us when we do, and so we just want to thank them and, and honor them and, and uh, remember them. Don't forget, October 27th is going to be our next Connections on a Thursday at 7 p.m. 
Don't forget our adopt a family project. We have a new family and we have some sheets out in the entryway for that. Our feed the kids program in Mexico that feeds 150 kids and there's a waiting list. So remember to sew into that as well. Don't forget sent youth every Wednesday. Pray for our leaders, pray for our youth. Um, and Family Sunday, the first Sunday of every month, is going to be November 6th, uh, this month, or next month, I guess. And we're going to be doing a brunch. Seeing some thumbs go up like this. Amen. So make sure you're here for that. We're going to do uh, a brunch for that. See my wife if, if uh, you want to have a list of what we need and what we're looking for. Amen. Can we just lift a hand just for a second and give him praise one more time? Father, we thank you for your presence that is so sweet. Huh. Lord, you are a present God. And I just pray this prayer right now. Father, I just feel this in my spirit. That there's somebody watching at home that needs to hear this prayer spoken into their lives. You are a present God. God. You are with us. You never leave us. You never walk away from us. Even times when it feels like we're in an empty room, even when we're full of people, even at times when we feel completely alone and there's people sitting beside us, you are there. You are present. You never leave. And to somebody that is watching from home that is battling this morning, battling with whether God cares or whether God hears. He absolutely hears and he always cares. He knows you. He sees you and he's with you. Reach out for him. He's with you and we thank you for that in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Psalms 31. 23. Sorry. I look down on my note and I guess the two is missing off the three. So instead of 23 and one it's 31. Psalms 23, we're going to go through that chapter this morning. I'm almost positive everyone can find Psalms 23. Most of you probably don't even have to open the Bible for this one. But last night, I was just praying and, and kind of finalizing and praying about what I was going to talk about this morning. And I begin to read through this a little bit closer than normal, and, and I thought to myself, and here's what popped in my head. There's probably no other chapter in the whole Bible that is memorized, more well-known, more quoted, more used than Psalms 23. It's used, ironically, it's used at weddings and funerals, it's used at the beginning of people's lives, spoken over to them. It's used at the end of their lives. It's used by believers and unbelievers alike. Unbelievers can quote Psalms 23. If you start it out, people that don't even go to church can probably quote Psalms 23. And here's what popped in my head, just how my mind works. What popped in my head is, if it's the most well-known chapter it must mean more than just quoting words off a page. Because something becomes a part of the fabric of society when it bears importance. Amen? Something becomes a part of the fabric of us as a church when it has extreme significance. We quote, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. We quote that for a reason because it's a part of the fabric of who we are as believers, right? And so I begin to read this and God began to just kind of speak to me a little bit. We're just gonna tear this apart a little bit this morning. Everyone say this with me, cause and effect. Psalms 23 is all about understanding cause and effect. Everyone say this with me, because of this, this. Because this happens, this happens. Because this is here, this is here. Cause and effect. Because 
of this situation, this situation is produced. And if you read through this chapter like we're going to do this morning, super simple, but I just know that somebody needs to hear this word of encouragement. It is all about cause and effect. It's all about because of one thing, something else. And so we're going to peel it apart. I want to read verse 1, just the first part of it. The first thing he declares is, the Lord is my shepherd. Everyone say cause. The Lord is my shepherd. Why would he want, why would he start out with that? Because if we don't understand who he is to us and what he is to us, none of the rest will make sense and none of the rest will bear any power. There's, there's something about knowing who he is in your life. Hallelujah. Because here's the thing. You can read the entire book, but if you don't understand who the author is to you personally, the entire book has no power and no meaning to you. So when we understand who he is in our lives, it can add power and validity and meaning to everything that comes after that. So the writer very much in the beginning just declares, we need to understand that the Lord is our shepherd. Can somebody say that? Now there's a few things that are important about understanding that he's a shepherd. One thing about understanding he's the shepherd is, if he is the shepherd, then we are his sheep. Hallelujah. If he is our shepherd, then we are the sheep of his pasture. That means he has a responsibility. Oh, hallelujah. Everyone say responsibility. He has a responsibility to look after the sheep that are in his care. Wow. I want that to sink in for a moment because that adds a new light on the relationship between us and our Father who is our shepherd. Us and Jesus who, who looks after and protects and, and, and sustains us. He doesn't just do it because he cares, even though he cares. He doesn't just do it because he loves you, even though he does love you. When he stepped into the position of shepherd and called you his sheep, he took on the responsibility for the flock that is under his care. He took that responsibility on, and so now when he looks at you, he doesn't just see somebody that he thinks to himself, I might take care of them today or I might not. I might be with them or I might not. It has become his absolute responsibility. Can everyone look at the one beside you and say, you are his responsibility. Wow. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? He is, I'm, he's responsible rather for me. I am under the care of my father, the good shepherd. I'm under his care. And so when I wake up in the morning, we are not in a relationship where God can look at me and say, if I have mercy on him this morning, I'll bless him. But if I don't, I'll leave him as is. He looks at me every day as the sheep of his pasture. Wow. Someone say, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm his sheep. He's responsible for me. He's responsible for me. As his sheep, I will block out every other voice. As his sheep, I will not be led by anybody but him. 
If somebody tries to lead me in any direction that is contrary to what my shepherd has told me to walk, contrary to the direction that the great shepherd has set out guidelines for me to walk, I will know he's either a hireling or he's somebody from the outside trying to rob me of what my shepherd is responsible for. Oh, glory to God. Do you understand why the enemy wants to take you out? A few weeks ago, we heard Joash talking about the power of the unified church, the power of us as a whole, as a one. And you know why the enemy wants to separate you from the herd, separate you from the sheepfold? Because as long as you are in the sheepfold, you are under the the protection, the guidance, the responsibility of the shepherd. He wants you to remove yourself from the protection of the shepherd. But as long as you stay in the sheepfold, the Lord is your shepherd. Hallelujah. What does a shepherd do? He protects. He looks out for. He feeds. He sustains. Hallelujah. He makes sure that where you are is where you need to be when you need to be there. He makes sure that your steps are safe. He makes sure he doesn't send you off somewhere that he hasn't checked out himself to make sure there's no holes that she's going to fall into. There's no pits that he's going to stumble into. I'm going to clear the path so that when you walk, hallelujah, you will follow me. Everyone say, follow him. My sheep know my voice. And what? Another, they will not follow. Someone say, the Lord is my shepherd. He's a protector. Everyone say, he's a protector. He's a savior. He's a caregiver. He's an instructor. He's a sustainer. He's a feeder. He's your refuge in storm. He's your shelter. He is all that you need to live, survive, and thrive under his care. He is your shepherd. He's responsible for you. Oh, glory to God. That changes how I come to him. Can I be honest with you? That changes how I approach him because I no longer approach him with the idea of, could you please, if you have time, do A, B, and C. I approach him with boldness and understanding that my well-being and my good is his responsibility. I didn't put it on him. He chose that responsibility when he said, I am your shepherd and you are my sheep. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. So because of that, I shall not want. Because he is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Everyone say cause and effect. Because the Lord is my shepherd and he sustains me and he keeps me and I'm his responsibility, I don't have to want for anything. Wow. Wow. I don't have to want for survival, because my survival is his responsibility. Does that make sense? I don't have to want for peace because my peace is his responsibility. I don't have to go searching and seeking for healing because my health is his responsibility. I don't have to seek and search for a sound mind because he has given me a sound mind. And my sound mind is his responsibility. Hallelujah. 
I don't have to go looking. I'm not condemning reading books. Don't, don't take it that way. But I don't have to go flipping through a book to find what I need. I have to flip through his instructions, stay in his sheepfold. And as long as I'm in his sheepfold, he is responsible for all that I need. I shall not want because the Lord is my shepherd. Somebody lift a hand and give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. John 10, we quoted it already. He just says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And as long as you stay under my care, I'm responsible. Now, when I hear that and I understand that, and we're going to move on to verse 2, but when I hear that and understand that, it certainly makes James' comments much more clear. Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. It makes sense now because all of the goodness of heaven is his. He's responsible for me because he's my shepherd and I'm his sheep. His responsibility propels him. That's why in the scripture so many times it was said of Jesus that compassion moved him to do something. Because he sees it as his responsibility. Oh, isn't that wonderful? If your son... Ask for bread or fish, will you give them a stone or serpent? Well, obviously not. Well, if you then, being men of sin, know how to good, give, give good gifts, how much more does your Father which is in heaven, your shepherd, desire to give good gifts to his people, his sheep? Can somebody give him praise? Hallelujah. Verse 2. Everyone say cause and effect. He makes me... Lie down in green pastures. Cause. Everyone say cause. He makes me lie down in green pastures. This speaks of a time of rest and peace in his presence. But the thing that I love about this cause, this moment, this statement, is it says he makes me lie down in green pastures. You might not realize this, but there are some times you don't know what's best for you. There's sometimes you get in situations that you don't know how to find peace in and you don't know how to get out of and you don't know how to deal with. How many's ever been in that moment where I can't figure out how to deal with this? I can't figure out how to find peace. I know the word says he gives us his peace, but I can't figure out how to obtain that. Sometimes in those moments, the shepherd will take the sheep and force them to lie down in his presence and receive restoration in their body and their mind from him. Can somebody say amen? I have had moments in my life where God just said, all right, time out. I need to put some effort and work in you because I need you to understand that I have a peace that passes understanding. Isn't it amazing that you and I as believers, when the entirety of the world is erupting in chaos, can find a green pasture that our shepherd has set in front of us and he can tell us, just lie down and relax. How can he do that? How can he do that? Here's how he can do that. Because while you're laying in his peace, he is marching the fence, making sure that nothing evil from the outside can penetrate on the inside. 
Hallelujah. Every once in a while, God looks at you and says, put up your fists, put on your fighting armor, and go to war. But sometimes he looks at you and says, you lay back, sit down, and rest in my peace. I'm going to go to war for you. I'm going to fight for you. The battle is the Lord's, and I'll let the victory belong to you. Somebody lift up your voice and give God praise. Hallelujah. Can we just take a second and give him an offering of praise this morning? I love it. I love it when God just puts his hand across your chest and says, I got this. I got this. You're ready to go to war. You're ready to fight. You're ready to push your way into it. You're ready to figure it out for yourself. You're ready to exhaust yourself and wear out your mind and exhaust your body and your spirit. And the Father, our shepherd, just reaches out and puts his hand in front of you and says, you just take a moment and rest and let me minister to you while I'm dealing with your enemies. I'll walk the fence. Oh, glory to God. God's looking at somebody in his here this morning and somebody watching online and he's telling you you relax I'll walk the fence for you I'll walk the perimeter of the pasture I'll make sure that the wolves are kept at bay I'll make sure that
car that has been returned to its originally intended condition. To restore means to return to its intended condition. To return it to the state it was created to exist in. After he has led me beside still waters, he takes my soul, the essence of who I am, and returns it to the condition that was originally created for me to walk in. Oh, I wish somebody had received that this morning. He restores my soul. He takes what has been broken, what has been hurt, what has been damaged, what has gone through hell and back, and he says, I'm going to restore that and return you to your original out of box, out of package, off the assembly line condition. That's the garden state. Somebody say the garden state. Hallelujah. He restores me. He looks at me and says, I know that there have been thousands of years of abuse that is weighing on your shoulders. I know that there's thousands of years of evil surrounding you in this world. But I'm going to take who you are, the essence of your being, and I'm going to return it to the garden state the way I created it. Oh, glory to God. Do you know what that means? That means the state that humanity was in right after he formed it and right after he breathed his life into its nostrils. God said, I will restore your soul. Wow. Wow. He restores my soul. What a declaration. What a declaration. He restores my soul. He takes everything that I was, everything that has happened to me. He takes every moment that has broken up my life. And he looks at me and he says, I'm going to bring that back to how it was originally meant to be. I wasn't built for chaos. I was built for peace. I wasn't built for fear. I was built for confidence. I wasn't built to go under. I was built to go over. I wasn't built to be cursed. I was built to be blessed. I wasn't built to be sick. I was built to be healthy. I wish somebody would give God praise this morning. And so God is saying, the writer here is saying, not only does he give me peace, not only does he walk the fence, not only does he shelter me and sustain me, but he reverses the curse of sin. He reverses the process and everything that sin did to me, he reverses it and puts me back in the state that he built me for. Oh, glory to God. Do you understand that what God's desire is for your life is to put you back in the very state that he created you for in the garden? That's what he wants to produce in your life. He wants to take you to that moment where he breathed his life into you and you became a living soul and you became a breathing being and he wants to return you into that place where he says, I am the one that takes care of you. I am the one that sustains you. I'm the one that is your source. I'm the one that gives you strength. I am your shepherd. Somebody lift up your hands and give God praise. He restores my soul. Everyone say, he restores my soul. Now, once he has done that, 
once he has restored my soul, guess what I'm able to do? I'm able to follow him as he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Wow. I can't walk those paths of righteousness with him until he restores me to how I'm supposed to be. Because when I'm in confusion and when I'm in chaos and when everything's going crazy around me and I've got a hundred voices that I'm listening to, I can't, be, I can't be led by him. But when I silence the voices and I block out everything that is happening in the world around me and I say, wait a minute, this is just a me and my shepherd moment. This is just a me and my shepherd. But what about this that's taking place in the world? Doesn't matter. I'm in his pasture and he's walking the fence. It's a me and him moment. He is my sustenance. He is my guide. He is my leader. He has restored me. Now he can lead me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Verse 4 has cause and effect. This is the only scripture in the whole chapter that it gives the effect and then the cause. Every other verse gives the cause and then the effect. This one gives the effect and then the cause. This one gives the benefit and then tells you why you have that benefit. Here's the effect. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's the effect. Here's the cause. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Wow. So let's flip that and let's, let's use cause and effect. Because I know that you are with me. And because you are my shepherd, I know that you have a rod and a staff. And that rod will correct me. And that rod will protect me. And that rod will fight off my enemies. And that rod will keep the wolves at bay. And that rod, should anything come in my perimeter, should anything come into the pasture, hallelujah, I know that my shepherd will raise up that rod and fight back any enemy that would come after me. Do you understand how amazing it is that every enemy that's coming for you has to go through your shepherd first? Every enemy that wants to destroy you has got to make it through your shepherd. And I know that my shepherd has a rod that has never been defeated. I know that my shepherd has a rod that can fight back any enemy. And every once in a while, when I start walking down the wrong path, that rod can give me a little tap on the backside and put me back in the safe zone again. Because as long as I stay in his, his safety... And in his pasture, he's walking the fence. Because he is with me. Just keep that scripture right up there if you would. Because he is with me. And his rod and his staff comfort me. Someone says, well, it's not very comfortable... When the rod of correction, as they say, is applied to the seed of knowledge. It's not very comfortable when that rod. But can I be honest with you? That is one of the most comforting times for me. It's not the most comfortable time. But it's one of the most comforting times. Because whom he loves, 
He chastens. And the fact that he will take the time, the fact that he will take the time out of the billions of people that are in this world to correct me on something because he wants me to walk in the fullness of what he has for me. That is an amazing indicator of how much he cares for me and how much he's invested in me. Listen to me. If he wasn't invested in you, he wouldn't take the time to correct you. If your good and your welfare and your blessing and your growth and your progress wasn't paramount to him, you would never feel the rod of correction because he would just let you go whatever direction you want to go. The sign of a parent that loves their child is not the parent that says, sure, go do whatever you want. That's a parent that doesn't care what the future of the child looks like. The parent that loves the child would rather have your child angry at you because they're stuck in the house than being allowed to be outside playing in traffic and getting hurt and getting destroyed by this world. The love of a father corrects because his desire is your best. Can somebody give him praise? Hallelujah. Because he has that rod, his staff, his staff connects me to him. The staff has the big loop on the top. The reason it's so big is because sometimes the shepherd just reaches out puts it around the sheep and just pulls them back to himself. Don't you love it when he just pulls you into himself? They comfort me. So when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Think about that. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Nothing evil puts fear in my life. Because I know he's with me. I know he's with me. And I've shared this before, but the reason I know he's with me is because there can't be a shadow unless there's a great light. If there's no light, there's no shadows. It's just all black. But because there's a shadow, it means that on the other side of that thing, there's a light that is greater than what's casting the shadow. So though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5. Cause, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil. I don't know about you, everyone picks certain parts of things that you like the best, but this is one of my top two favorite parts of this whole chapter. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil. Wow. He sets you up right in the middle of all that is trying to destroy you. He has the ability to place you in a moment of blessing and sustenance and provision right in the middle of everything that is trying to destroy the essence of who you are. Only the great shepherd can do that. Hallelujah. When you're surrounded, we sing the song, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like the enemy's got me surrounded, but not really, because as long as you are with him, you are never really surrounded. As long as he is with you, you are never surrounded. Can I just tell you this just on the flyby? He's living on the inside of you, correct? He walks with you. Everywhere you go, where is he? You can shout it. 
Every move you make, where is he? Every place you sit, where is he? Everywhere you lay down, where is he? Every ship you sail on, where is he? So if he's in you, with you, by you, around you, on you, through you, sailing with you, walking with you, running with you, if he's not going down, you're not going down. So your enemies can't defeat you because he's with you. And so, in the presence of your enemies, sometimes he wants to sit at a table. So if he sits at the table and communes, where are you going to be? Sitting right with him. And he anoints my head with oil. That's the cause. Do you know what the effect is? My cup runneth over. Oh, somebody give him a praise offering tonight, this morning. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. Wow. Wow. I think the scripture put it best when he said it like this. The more the Egyptians afflicted the children of Israel, the more they grew and multiplied. The more the enemy tried to rob them of their humanity, their dignity, their status, their wealth, and everything that they were, the more they grew and multiplied. Because Goshen was there, and he prepared a table for them in the presence of their enemies. Hallelujah. The only difference between now and then is they had to go to Goshen to have that experience. We walk in a Goshen that we live in the experience of everything that surrounds me does not have to penetrate me and get on the inside of who I am because who I have inside is greater than everything on the outside. So when the enemies surround me, can I quote this scripture properly? Can I quote this how it's supposed to be said? When the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against it. No wonder people get discouraged and depressed. They read scriptures in ways that encourage depression. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against it. When the enemy opens up the dam and pours all the water that he can in on my life, I can barely stand, but the Spirit of God will raise up a flag and say, Don't, no. When the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. Thou preparest a table in the presence of my enemies. And my cup runneth over. It never runs dry. Somebody lift your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In verse number six, here's the cause. Surely, goodness and mercy. Just leave that scripture up there. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me. God's bloodhounds, goodness and mercy, are so hot on your trail 
that it doesn't matter what direction you take, where the enemy tries to block them off, they are God's tracking device. And everywhere you go, it doesn't say goodness and mercy shall follow me on every good day. It doesn't say goodness and mercy will follow me on the best of times. It says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Whew. When you're looking forward and you think that there's nothing can go positive in your day, take a look over your shoulder because hot on your trail is God's bloodhounds, goodness and mercy. When it seems like the enemy is robbing you of your joy and everything you look at is sad, everything you look at is depressing, everything the world is telling you is that you're going under, take a look over your left shoulder and you're going to see the goodness of God and take a look over your right shoulder and you're going to see his mercy. And can I tell you something? That Psalms, I believe 136 or 139, has a whole chapter that at the end of every verse, reminds you his mercy endureth forever hallelujah somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise surely surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life I don't know what that does for you but let me tell you what it does for me it changes how I think Because I've been taught all of my life that I need to spend my days in pursuit of the blessings of God. In pursuit of his mercy. In pursuit of his goodness. How can I be chasing something forward that's following me everywhere I go? I'm not in pursuit of his goodness. His goodness is chasing after me. I'm not in pursuit of his mercy. His mercy is in pursuit of me. Oh, hallelujah. Think about that. I'm just walking, living my life. I'm just walking through my day. I'm just dealing with conflict and dealing with circumstances and dealing with situations throughout my day. I'm just walking, living my life as a believer, as a child of the living God. And I take a detour and the devil says, you're all by yourself and you're not going to make it. But when I look back over my shoulder, I find out that God's bloodhounds still have my scent and they're still chasing see me down the highway his goodness is running after it's running after it's running after me God's goodness is chasing you hallelujah and because of that because of that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever Stand with me. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Everyone say the habitation. The dwelling place of the Lord. Imagine this concept. I will live in his living quarters all the days of my life. I will dwell in his dwelling place forever. I will inhabit 
his habitation forever. You better get that because I'm just going to keep saying it until you do. I'm going to stay in his staying place forever. My home will be his home forever. Now, I used to read that when I was a kid, and I thought to myself, who wants to live in the church all the days of their life? <laughs> Unless you go in the youth room, there's no video games. The fridge in the pantry is limited. Unless it's the day of potluck. But then I read something that changed my way of thinking. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God? And the Spirit of God dwells in you. Because the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want, because he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters, because he restores my soul and anoints my head with oil and prepares a table in the presence of my enemies, because his rod and staff comfort me and I can walk through anything and I don't have to be afraid, because of everything that I've just read, I can dwell in the dwelling place of the Most High God forever. And I don't, how can I do it forever? Because I don't ever have to worry about leaving his dwelling place because I am his dwelling place. Hallelujah. That's why when I come in, I'm bringing him with me. And when I leave on Sunday morning, he ain't staying here. Oh, glory to God. These walls, this building that we're in, this is where we come. We are where he is. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But all oh, verse 17. But verse 17. Put that up there for me. Just read that out loud, would you please? No, that's quiet. Read that out loud, would you please? <sighs> What's the temple? If anyone defiles you. God's vengeance will be unleashed on your enemy. Glory to God. That word, anyone, in the original Greek, it's much closer to a phrase than a word. If any, here's how it would read in the original. If any outside force defiles the temple, your enemy will come at you one way, and what will happen to him? He will be scattered seven ways. Why? Because if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God, you are holy. Because you are his temple. Cause. The Lord is my shepherd. Everyone say it with me. I shall not want. 
Go back to verse number two and just put them up one at a time as we just declare this before we close. He makes me, shout it, he makes me lie down in green pasture. So he leads me beside still waters. Verse three. He restores my soul. He returns my soul back to the way it was meant to be when he created me and he breathed his life into me and I became a living soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, how, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for the, you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. And because of that, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Because I am the house of the Lord. I am his temple. I can't not be who I am. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. I don't know about you. I trust you will. But I know this. Every time I read that chapter or hear it from now on. I'm going to think of it from a whole different context. Because he is. I can. Can we lift our hands this morning and just take a moment in his presence. Go ahead, just take a moment and give him praise this morning. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for your promises. We thank you, Lord, that because you are our shepherd, you have taken that spot. You have taken that position. You have taken that responsibility. You are responsible for us. And we will stay in your pasture. Lord, you dwell within us. You live in us. You guide us and you direct us. And Lord, because you are, we can. Everyone shout that with me, would you? Because he is, I can. Because he is, I will. Because he is, I am. Take a moment and give him praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God.